Hey guys, Garage here, and today we're going to be doing a roof rack on the GX470. Let's check it out. We have the Nash Fabco roof rack set up here, and the side panels for Rotopax fuel tanks is actually what I'm going to use it for. I did order those separate. Those are extra. Um, I ordered those because I don't like carrying fuel inside the vehicle for my generator. I don't like carrying it uh, in the trailer. I want to keep this um, on the outside of the vehicle. Four gallons is going to be plenty, two gallons per side. So I did order those along with the roof rack. Um, one of the main driving factors for me to get this roof rack is our travel trailer has very limited roof space, space for solar panels. We already have a large panel up there and not all of those over there are going to go up there, but I've got a panel over there that's actually going to go on the roof of the GX and that's going to give me solar, uh, just one extra panel to keep my uh, EcoFlows charged on the travel trailer setup. So anyways, yeah, this when I saw this roof rack from Nash, uh, I remember the post when it came up, I was just like, damn, that that is a nice looking roof rack. Uh, probably the best I've seen. I love the way that they did the angles and the cuts and so forth on the on the uh, sides. It just looks really good. So I'm really looking forward to getting it installed. Um, fit and finish on this. Well, I can't say fitment yet because I haven't put it on, but the finish on this product looks really, really good. All the cutouts, everything looks really nice. Um, all the welds look good. Kind of on the inside, I mean, it's aluminum. Powder coating looks good. And uh, I gotta say, Nash was a pleasure to work with. So if you guys are looking for a roof rack, definitely give this guy a shout. Um, the product did arrive about, uh, well, delayed, let's just say that. It took about twice the time to get it to when I was quoted. And the reason for that is the crossbars, which obviously he doesn't extrude his own crossbars. Those got delayed and he had to order in for a long time. Um, those got delayed a little bit. And as soon as they came in, he had me a tracking number. And why I don't mind at all, you know, situations pop up on these low produ volume production runs on stuff like this. I don't mind that at all because he kept me up to speed. And if I had a question or message him, boom, I had an answer like right away. So I got no problem with that. So, you know, shout out to Nash, you make a good looking product and let's see how it, uh, how it installs. So I'm going to get this on our victim, my 08 GX470. Me throwing that up there, and uh, hopefully we'll get everything wired and done this weekend. So I'm gonna quit yapping. I'm gonna start taking things apart. So here's where we're at so far. So I got all the covers off. You'll see this one is shattered because uh, Lexus is awesome. They repainted my whole car for free. Why? Uh, I don't know. Paint was peeling a little bit, so Lexus is like, you know what? We're gonna do you solid. We're gonna paint your whole car for free, and that's what they did. Um, but it got repainted at Penske Auto Center and they did have to remove the roof rack because a lot of peeling was up top and These idiots they had to have broken the clips on these covers and they glued them in place So Penske Automotive Paint Center in Scottsdale, Arizona Yeah, um, anyways Got all the rest off. You just have to kind of knock them forward on these and then the rear you knock back you loosen the cross member thingies here and then the cross member thingy should Actually, I don't think they slide out forward. I think they have to go towards the back, but they will slide out. Once I get those out, we're going to take out these bolts um, and check out the track and see where we're at. So I just wanted to do a quick little video. That's where we're at. This didn't require any tools to take these off except for that one to break the freaking plastic off. But um, all you had to do, like I said, is when they're in there, you just kind of knock them forward or backwards on the rear and this whole cover comes off. So it wasn't, wasn't that big of a deal. So let me get on removing all the bolts and these cross member thingies and uh, and let's get this roof bare. So we took our five 12 millimeter bolts out. There was two in the back, one in the middle, two in the front. And this is what we're left with. You can see where the metal was. Still got that side over there, but uh, I got the two mounts. Tracks already cut out. This is a bracket I got to remove. Those look like two tens, not twelves. And then the front. I'm gonna clean up the paint, kind of wipe everything down. You can see how dingy it is. And then get the other side off and um, we'll get ready. We'll actually be ready to start mounting the uh, Nash. So that was actually pretty dang quick and easy besides fighting that stupid glued on piece, so. All right, so the rack is off the old 470. It's kind of weird looking without it. I don't know. I actually kind of like without it, but uh, that's not the purpose of this video. We got to put a rack back on. Um, so let's check this out. 
Hardware kit from Nash. Got all of our hardware. I love this. Extra hardware. He knows what he's doing. Um, cool. Everything is individually bagged. Labeled. All good things. I like how he did all this stuff. Now this has a scratch on it. I don't care about. But anyways. Um, everything was actually cut into the product. So driver's side front. 47 for a GX470 I assume. Wow, I'm so smart. That's what I think it means. Um, driver's middle, driver's rear. Passenger rear, passenger middle, passenger front. So yeah, that's that's actually pretty cool. And he's got a reasonably decent instruction manual, um, which I just did step one, which was remove the OEM rack. Cool. Uh, let's get on to mounting these. Now we have to use some uh, Permatex. I'm just going to use this. You got to use a sealer. I use this shit on everything like Frank's Red Hot. So this is what's actually going to seal these nylon spacers to the uh, roof rail assembly. And then once we get those sealed in place, these are what's going to loosely bolt on. We're not going to tighten them all the way down. I know that because I read the instructions a little bit. So we're going to put all these little brackets on, on these spacers, hand tight only, and then we'll get on to the next step. And again, we're going to use Permatex around i guess the base of these i'm going to look to see how we're going to do it probably on top of the washers and we're going to make a little seal so that water can't drip into the cab of the vehicle so i ran a little bit of the permatex i love using those pre-pressurized cans um, around each of the gaskets and uh let's see here put it in kind of squish it down nothing really goes in the holes but i got all six of these all set now i got to grab the hardware and then these guys are going to go on top of those standoffs and then i got to use more permatex around the washer um, probably around the base with the kind of the mating surface and on top of the bolt because you don't want any water running inside the vehicle that's that's not a good thing so i'm going to get to that okay so what i've done again ran the bead around there I then ran a bead around the top side of the bracket, and then I ran a little bead around the uh, neck of that that uh, bolt. And that way, when the bracket sits on there, it's going to seal the bottom. When I drop this washer on, it's going to seal between the washer and the uh, bolt here. And then that little bead right there is going to seal against the washer. So I got kind of three seals going on. So let's uh, wish I had the hands to do this all on camera, but um, I'll show you in just a minute what it looks like. Definitely used a little bit too much, but that's okay. I can wipe it down, but that's what the seals look like. We got seals down there, got seals midway, bottom and top, and on the nut. And uh, now I've got four more of those to do on this side, and then I gotta get those brackets pre mounted up. So uh, let me get to that. I've got my brackets all pre positioned, and my proudest moment so far is check this out. Look at that. That's not actually silicone, but look at that. And look at that. All that silicone got nothing on me. Uh, that is, I'm usually like a kindergartner on first day of uh, finger painting. And uh, I got none on the vehicle, except where I wanted it to be, and none on my hands. I'm pretty proud of that. So I, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit because this went way faster than I thought. I'm like, how am I going to get these up here and get the bolts in at the same time? I'm like trying to balance it, figure it out. And then I realized he like totally, this Nash guy, engineered these things, thankfully, where they actually just hang. You don't have to bolt them on at first. Where the hell's a bracket at? There we go. Um, they have little pockets. So you can just literally lift this whole side panel up, set it on, go grab your step ladder, which I've got to do, and then you just put your bolts in loosely, and that's it. So that made installation for just one person really really easy so at least I've got it up there now I'm gonna get all my bolts in just kind of hand tight and uh, or just barely tight and um, then we got to get all the crossbars and that front cap piece and all that done so I'm gonna get on that all right I'm back so this was really easy so once once you um, get these side panels hung get the bolts on you go ahead and you tighten down the side bolts. This lines up the brackets, so each of the three brackets. Once those are lined up, I got the Elote man outside riding. You can hear his horn. But anyways, uh, once you get those brackets lined, then you can actually bolt them down to the car. Um, the only issue I ran into was this middle bracket 
Getting to those Allens, that looks like a big space. There is like no space to get a standard Allen wrench in there at all. I'm really lucky I had a low profile set and I was able to get down in there. Most people won't have that. But um, yeah, you will need a low profile Allen to get in there because you can't access those Allens from straight above. And even a ball um, type Allen, just too much angle to really tighten it down, right? So I was, like I said, lucky to have a low profile set and that's what you'll need for those. Uh, the rest went smooth. But um, yeah, so... Once you tighten each of these down, like I was mentioning, that bracket, that bracket, that bracket, go ahead and tighten it down so this is solid, and these are really solid already. And then the next part of the instructions was to lay out all your crossbars, and right inside here is where your bolts are gonna go. So you can set these up however you like. Um, I'm gonna get to that and uh, get these bolted down. I had to come back really quick. I just wanted to show you guys this, and this really speaks to the quality of the engineering of this roof rack. Um, you can see I've got a few in here. This one's not in right now, but I mean, the, the tolerance is on this thing for a freaking roof rack. I can just use one hand to slip that in. Dude, seriously, that is just crazy. Now this one's gonna make me an honor. Nope, one hand. To get those in and have that precision of a fit without any alignment, these were already bolted down, it is crazy. That is just, like I said, that just speaks to quality engineering. And I'm really, really impressed. I mean, I, I can say the fit and finish is outstanding even before I'm done because I'm virtually done. All I got is some crossbars to bolt on. But uh, fit and finish on this thing is absolutely top notch. I got to hand it to uh, Nash Fabco. Nice advertisement right there. If I get the lighting right. Something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to get these crossbars on, and then I'm going to get my molly panel deals on, and then I will be ready to crawl some malls. I'll be back. So installation is complete of the roof rack and the lights themselves. I haven't wired the lights yet. That's going to be a project for tomorrow. But I got the light bar in. And um, I really like how the Nash guys angled this little wing back here because I've got these little pods that I got that are brighter than hell that mount up. They look really nice. They actually look better in person than, than that. They look kind of actually really small. But the nice thing is with that angled piece, I'm not going to get blinded in the rear view mirror, which is actually, I'm right at the rear view mirror area. That light is not going to blind me. Um, it's almost like the Nash guy knew what he was doing. But um, that's that little pod. See my reflection in the window. But man, did that go together sweet. You talk about a well-engineered product. Turned out really nice. See the other pod. The only thing in my brain I have a slight question on is going to be the bolt. If you look underneath, they are within about two, three millimeters of the paint. They're just a little bit long. And I may just add a washer or two to take some of the length out because what I'm worried about, and it may be nothing, is I get the weight of a Rotopax on here and two gallons of fuel, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, whatever that is. And I'm just worried those may have just enough play to touch the paint, dig into the paint. Maybe nothing, but I just caught that and I'm just gonna get some more washers. I think I'm just gonna lift it off maybe two millimeters and I think I'm gonna be happy with that. But those turned out really good too. You got the fit and finish on these. I don't know if you guys can see it. If the camera really shows it, but the alignment is freaking perfect with the window. Again, like he knew what he was doing. It's amazing. I have not tightened down the crossbars yet. Um, I gotta figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with the solar panel up on top. These panels are big, and these are only 250 watt uh, sun powers, but those are big panels. Um, I just need one up there to, to augment my travel trailer so we gotta see if it'll fit how i'm gonna fit it up there um he included light bar brackets these are not the 
brackets that came with this light, but he included um, his own brackets and they worked out spot on. Again, like it was all made to go together. Went together really easy on the bar. So that's it for the installation tonight. But man, I'm really happy with that. And uh, just to throw it out there, no, I did not get any favors or deals for Nash for doing a video. Um, I paid for this 100% out of pocket. Um, if I didn't like this, I would say it was junk. This is actually a top quality product. He really did a hell of a job on the on the uh, engineering on this. So I got to hand it to him. I don't know of a better built rack than this that would go in so easy that one person can do it by themselves in a few hours and just taking their time and have it turn out this good and this precise. Awesome. So that is it for our Nash Fabco roof rack installation video. Please go check these guys out. Take a look at their website. They're doing some really good stuff and building some really cool product. Everything else you see in the video, I've got all kinds of links in the video description below for anything I may have used in the video, um, miscellaneous items, so please check that out. You purchasing from those links does help us out to do cool projects like this. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe if this video helped you out or helped you make a decision. And again, check out Nash Fabco. Really good guys. I will catch you guys later.